Now I've got a uh, project uh, coming up where I need to build a Yagi from uh, PCB and I thought I'd do uh, this separate video to show you a uh, very very simple Yagi design that you can etch out on PCB and basically build off this design into lots and lots of uh, different projects if you want to make it bigger with more elements to add more gain you can but we're going to build a simple uh, two parasitic element uh, Yagi antenna here that uh, should give about uh, 5 dB of gain for 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi now this particular design that I came across uh, quite a few uh, years ago now uh, the original designer designed it to be uh, etched onto double-sided PCB but I've modified it uh, since then so you can use single-sided PCB which uh, is a lot cheaper and a lot less uh, wasteful now as I said this is really really simple you need uh, three pieces of PCB I've uh, got one here it's 70 millimeters by uh, 50 millimeters and then you want two separate uh, PCBs for the main driven element and the bat reflector and these measure out at 50 millimeters by 28 millimeter millimeters now the other thing that uh, you're going to have to get hold of that I'm going to use is some vinyl tape. You can pick this up off eBay uh, pretty uh, cheaply. Mine even came with a little cutter and uh, a little uh, spudgy here to get all the air bubbles out. But uh, I've got some here. This is uh, three millimeter millimeters um, wide, so three millimeters wide. And for the uh, bat reflector and the driven elements here, I've got some five millimeters wide. And we're basically going to lay this out onto the uh, PCB board and then etch them out. And the, the vinyl tape is going to protect the copper that we don't want to be etched out. And then we can remove the vinyl tape afterwards. This is uh, something I prefer doing rather than doing the uh, heat transfer method, which I don't really like. I've never got it to work, work properly, but uh, using vinyl tape pretty quick way how to do it and of course back in the 80s and 1970s they used to do this all the time to make uh, circuit boards you used to be able to get vinyl tape shapes on uh, some wax paper and you just laid out your uh, traces and use the different shapes and curves off the wax paper to make uh, your circuit board so yeah it's uh, an old way an old method of doing something like this but uh, really really simple so I'm going to start off with the uh, five millimeter wide vinyl tape and I'm going to put a strip along each edge of the PCB for the main driven element. Just want to line it up on the edge, get it nice and flat and then cut it off and I'm going to do the same on this side here. And once you've found the center of the PCB then take some of the three millimeter tape and just lay that down over the top. Now I'm going to cut away the uh, excess here, so I'm going to use this uh, piece of tape that we've just laid down here as a guide. I've got uh, my razor blade here, and I'm just going to cut it off on this side, so we've got a nice right angle coming up through there, so we can remove this piece now, because we don't need this. So now I need to measure off 23 millimeters to create the uh, driven element. So I've got my calipers here starting from the outer edge of this uh, L shape we've just made here. Measuring from there, I'm just going to put a little mark at 23 millimeters and cut away this excess here. Now next I've got my calipers set to uh, five millimeters. I'm uh, looking at it upside down and uh, I've got my calipers on the edge again here. I'm going to put another little mark just here and I'm going to cut with uh, my razor blade a triangle out just like that. And when you cut out your little triangle, you don't want to throw it away. You want to take the little triangle and then put it back on the board round about there so we get rid of this right edge here because remember when you're uh, laying out tracks on a board and then uh, you're going to push RF down those tracks any right angle will be an antenna so we'll get loss from uh, that right angle bend so we're just going to use this triangle here to get rid of that right angle bend 
So my two driven elements are finished and on this one here you can see I've just uh, cut away uh, two millimeters of the vinyl tape here so this leg here is no longer connected to uh, here which will be the uh, back reflector we're going to be uh, soldering our signal wire the center core of the coax onto there this one this one stays connected and uh, when we flicked flick them both over and put them back to back we make the element up like so so now we're going to make the uh, parasitic element so we're working on the, the bigger piece of PCB here this is 70 millimeters by 50 millimeters and because we've measured these pieces of PCB off precisely you know the first one the first parasitic element that we lay down we're going to lay down on the edge here we don't have to measure so we can measure the second parasitic element off the first one that we lay down and I'm going to be uh, using a three millimeter millimeter vinyl tape for the parasitic elements so laying the first one down right on the edge of the PCB now for the second uh, parasitic element we need to measure 18 millimeters uh, distance between the uh, outer edge of the first parasitic element here so I want to use my calipers set at uh, 18 millimeters and put a little mark on the PCB and then I'm going to draw a straight line with my straight edge So that's my uh, three boards prepared very very simple uh, yagi with uh, two parasitic elements as i said should be about 5 db of gain I'm going to etch away all the excess copper that we want to remove and then we can assemble these three boards now i've just uh, removed the pieces you just see me on camera make from the etching tank and as soon as i did i realized the mistake that i've made and i haven't shown you the uh, length of the parasitic elements and indeed I haven't cut them down as you can see here now over the last few days I've made quite a uh, few of these uh, little yagis but for some reason I just uh, got ahead of myself but uh, we're going to uh, rectify this mistake I was thinking about uh, just reshooting it with another piece but it's nice to see mistakes sometimes but uh, what we need to do first is find the center of this PCB board so I've got my center line down the middle and uh, another thing I want to mention is I don't normally use a sharpie to do this I would normally use a pencil because then you don't have to worry about cleaning it off before you uh, put this in the etching tank but unfortunately the pencil doesn't show up too well on the uh, camera but uh, what I'm going to do I've got my calipers here set to 18.5 I'm just going to put a uh, little mark on that side and then the same on the opposite side and then what I do then I uh, use a uh, square as you can see here lined up against the mark and I've got my razor blade here and I just use the square to cut the uh, vinyl tape and this way it's a lot quicker especially if you're making one that's a lot longer with more parasitic elements uh, it just makes it a lot quicker and you don't have to draw lines on everything then and cut each one individually makes it a lot quicker and a lot more accurate as well so again get it lined up and just cut the vinyl tape and then just remove the excess pieces and I can stick this back in the etching tank so now that we've uh, rectified our mistake a uh, second thing that I like to do with these is uh, flow solder over the uh, copper elements it just adds a little bit more uh, metal to the mix and uh, makes them a little bit thicker some of these cheap boards off eBay the copper on here is a little bit thin and uh, I think it does improve them slightly also it stops any tarnishing as well I mean although you could paint these of course now that we've got everything cleaned up I'm going to epoxy the elements onto this PCB board now now I do like to put the one on the top where um, we're going to solder the signal wire to I don't think it makes a great deal of difference it's just something that I do now I've drawn a line here 17 millimeters from the first uh, parasitic element and that's where I need to line this PCB up on and epoxy it 
in place like so and if there's any overhang at the back we can just file that flat at the end when it's all dry but we need to epoxy this one on this side and then obviously the second one on the opposite side to make our dipole now before we take this over to the test bench and see uh, how well it performs we'll check its VSWR as well um, there's one last thing that we need to do and we need to drill some small holes in the back reflector here all the way through so we can connect the ground on here with the ground on the back reflector here and also this element here so we need to connect them all up using some uh, copper wire so this is the uh, method that I like to use. I've got some uh, thin copper wire here and I've uh, tinned it up already. I've drilled the holes, as you can see, through uh, the ground plane on here. Just spaced them out neatly, 5mm in from this side and then 10, 10, 10 and then 5 again. I've got it on this uh, piece of aluminium here, um, strapped down. And uh, that lip there will just allow... A little bit of the uh, copper wire to poke through so when I solder it onto this end and trim away any excess I've got a little bit poking through on that end which I can come in and then solder that in place and then trim away any excess so you may come up with a better method but this is the uh, method that uh, I've been using for a while now you just need to solder it in place just as you would a component and just flip it over to do the other side and this time I don't have it hanging off that side if you have it on this uh, piece of aluminium here it'll stop it from uh, either dropping out when you get too much heat onto that copper wire and uh, basically desoldering it itself and it will uh, keep it in place until you solder up this side so if you had them hanging off the uh, end the heat will cause it all to uh, desolder and they just come out, they drop out over the bottom. So this is the best method that I've come up with of doing this. Now here it is, and uh, I want to give this a test over on the network analyzer, plus a few others that uh, I've just modified the design a little bit and played around with, and some longer ones as well, just adding the parasitic elements. I want to see if that changes anything uh, with the main driven elements there. But uh, for a long time, um, I pondered about this design and uh, Yargis I wasn't really interested in in them until probably four years ago now and uh, there are so many Yargi designs out there um, more than any other antenna um, there are more Yargi designs than anything else and if you take a look at this one at first glance it doesn't seem to have any kind of balance and some designs that I've done in the past um, work just as well without a balance. Some don't. Some seriously do need to uh, have a balance for them to work, uh, at least for transmitting. If you're just receiving, you, you don't have to bother as such. But um, I posted this uh, on a few forums uh, about a year ago now, and uh, it came to the conclusion on the forums that it does indeed have a balance and if you look at uh, if we look at um, this one here for instance uh, you've got this driven element here which is not connected to the back reflector you know we've uh, got it separated there's a signal going in there and then the rest of this is ground and we've got the vias going on to the uh, opposite side that are connected to the uh, second element and the fact that we've got that there and this element is connected to this ground on here and then through the vias along here um, that is the balance on this design that's what uh, a lot of people have told me I think uh, they're probably correct that yes it does indeed have a balance but it's not obvious at first glance and this is acting as a balance because uh, a balance can be uh, quite simple a simple uh, loop of um, coaxial cable it doesn't have to be anything over uh, dramatic um, you know a design that uh, at first glance looks over complicated it's just a simple loop of wire in most cases and uh, I do think that that is the balance but uh, we'll take it over to the network analyzer and if it doesn't have a balance it should have an extremely high VSWR but I've got some other ones to test out here this is uh, just basically the same design um, it's got a longer 
uh, reflector at the back but the parasitic elements are the same length and the spacing between them is the same as well um, I've also got this one that I want to take a look at now this one as you can see is uh, it's all connected along here there's a, a boom there connecting all the elements it's also connected at the back there as well and uh, you can see I've um, you know this one's a little bit upside down compared to this one the signal wire can connects at the back there but um, if if my theory and some other theory is correct that this is the ballon here I'm just wondering if uh, connecting everything electrically along the boom here um, will mess that up I don't know if it will so I've got this one here to throw in to uh, give it a test and the rest of them are just exactly the same this is a, a longish one here but the measurements are exactly the same and uh, this one here so let's get over to the bench and give these a test it should be interesting so here we are on the test bench then I'm starting off with the uh, smallest one first you see the setup here it's a setup you've seen many times before on this channel and uh, over on the uh, network analyzer we've got a very surprising output so over here on the network analyzer you can see uh, the dip there it's uh, really really wide I've got it sweeping from 2 gigahertz over here all the way to 3 gigahertz over here and uh, you can see the dip there I've got it set on 2.45 gigahertz that's uh, basically smack on the middle of uh, the Wi-Fi spectrum so we're in this little dip here that will be the entire Wi-Fi spectrum channels 1 to 12 but uh, it's extremely wide and broadband and uh, that's why people do like Yagi's because they are so broadband and cover um, you know a, a wide area of the spectrum even if they're set to center frequency just on one particular point but um, that's a really nice output from this uh, little Yagi here with only two parasitic elements so let me hook one of the other ones up and we'll have a look at the, out, the output of one of those as opposed to uh, just two elements maybe we'll stick one on with a, a few more so here we are with the longest one that I've uh, made out of all these uh, PCB Yagis this has got uh, 10 parasitic elements on it but uh, again over on the uh, network analyzer a very nice output so it's almost identical to the uh, first one uh, but again it's just slightly different but again very wide it seems to be even wider this time got it centered on the uh, 2.45 gigahertz again you can see this lovely dip down here I mean uh, at the base of this dip it seems a little bit smoother than uh, the uh, smaller one and again I wanted to do this because I wanted to know if adding parasitic elements would have uh, any effect on the center frequency that we're trying to aim for and whether it shifted one way or another but you can see really nice uh, output there on the uh, network analyzer I'm really uh, pleased with uh, the design of this yard is so simple but uh, as you can see on the output so effective now next on the test setup I've got the uh, wildcard one this is uh, one that I've modified slightly so all the parasitic elements are connected up uh, electrically so uh, it's you know versus uh, a uh, isolated boom uh, with versus a uh, unisolated boom which I did in a recent video and uh, in the real world uh, my argument is you don't see any real difference so I thought I'd modify this just to uh, answer that question because at the end of the day I don't know if it would uh, change anything with a PCB design you know a metal design I don't see any difference but uh, a PCB design might change things and uh, as you can see over on the network analyzer it certainly does so here's the output of the one that I've modified on the network analyzer and as you can see completely different from the uh, other two outputs the other two had a big dip down here carried on along here and then went back up here but I've got it centered on uh, 2.45 gigahertz as uh, I have previously with the other two but uh, we haven't got this pronounced dip down here like we have with the others so connecting all those parasitic elements up has changed something within the design and uh, whether it's played a part because of the built-in ballon whether it's messed anything up with that I'm not sure at this moment in time but um, if I did want to make one where they're all connected possibly if I um, enlarge the uh, 
main driven element slightly instead of being 23 millimeters long I made them 24 millimeters it might shift everything this way so connecting them up has uh, messed around with uh, this design but uh, again you know if you were to hook this up to a uh, Wi-Fi card and do a scan it would work pretty well in that area but uh, probably not as well as the other ones but it would still definitely work and uh, we've seen worse antennas than this come from China so I hope we've learnt a uh, few things with this uh, video I mean number one uh, a different method of making something like this onto uh, PCB rather than etching or printing out artwork and etching it that way uh, pretty straightforward to build it just uh, with a two uh, different uh, types of uh, vinyl tape one five millimeters and one three millimeters pretty uh, simple thing to do really and such a simple design that also works really really well and as we saw on the output on the uh, network analyzer they've all got uh, very nice frequency responses I know I only showed you these two but these two were virtually identical in their patterns the only odd one out was uh, this one of course uh, and yeah possibly if I uh, go and start uh, changing the uh, driven elements on this maybe we'll get it back onto center frequency but um, that's an extra step etching that and you know is it really worth going that extra s step you don't see any difference there's no real benefit in doing it then you know going that extra step is just not worth it in my mind you might as well just stick with this uh, simple design and adding the extra parasitic elements didn't really change anything on the center frequency so at least I know now that I can just add them on um, can't go uh, stupid of course one of the reasons you can't go too stupid is this PCB board you've got to be really careful with it it can come looking uh, a little bit like a banana sometimes so just make sure it's really really straight or put it inside something that will keep it straight as for the uh, VSWR um, I did film that but unfortunately I forgot to turn my microphone on so I've got some screenshots here uh, that show these different Yagis and to be quite honest with you all uh, all of these all came in at under 1.5 they were all about 1.4 as an average and that is really really good a really good VSWR for a Yagi Yagis are notoriously high um, a lot higher than that so this PCB design really simple really good center frequency and a really good VSWR now one of the reasons that um, I've been looking at these uh, over the last few weeks is because I want to update the uh, video of the uh, Yagi in a can video that I made many many years ago now and I've learnt so much since then and I want to make a uh, full size one using a uh, toilet brush um, tin and uh, I want to make a smaller one um, this is a tin that I've uh, sourced and uh, it's just a perfect diameter we can fit uh, you know PCB inside there and again I thought you know if I just jump straight onto this video it would make the video far too long so I thought I'd show you a dedicated video on uh, making uh, this PCB board design because uh, when you know how to make something as simple as this you can use it in so many different applications even you know security cameras 2.4 gigahertz security cameras and uh, I will have included some artwork down below in the description for this video and uh, some of the measurements although I did mention all the measurements in this video and I will be uh, showing you probably in a few weeks time I've got a few more projects in between but I am going to have a go at uh, doing the same method to try building one for uh, 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi um, I think uh, 5.8 gigahertz is going to be too small to uh, use that method um, you know that's going to be a, a direct artwork uh, to the PCB board but I think I uh, should be able to uh, make one with a vinyl tape for 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi so that'll be a future video I'll uh, release the measurements for that as well and we'll test it again on the network analyzer so any questions you've got please feel free to uh, drop them below and just remember you know as far as Yagis go I could probably carry on reading now for the next 50 years and I still won't have even scratched the surface of the subject when it comes to Yagis there's so many different designs but uh, hopefully this design you know it's a it's a nice 
very very simple design you found it useful and if you did please uh, give the video a thumbs up if you're enjoying these videos and you want to help support the channel then please feel free to uh, drop by patreon but uh, for now hopefully you'll join me on the next one